48 Hour Film Project is a weekend, a collaborative effort for local filmmakers. It's a local competition as well as an international competition. What you do is you basically have on Friday you're assigned a genre and, and a line of dialogue and a prop. So it kind of ensures that you're not making the film ahead of time and just saying you made it in 48 hours. Right. Shoot, edit, and basically deliver a final product and it gets screened in a movie theater. So it's a lot like the Film Olympics. That is the way I looked at it. And uh, he's Jackie Joyner Kersey. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it was, it was, I'm the girl with the broken foot. What's her name? Oh, yeah. When we first heard the genre that we drew, it was uh, a little interesting. Um, the initial genre that we drew was birthday anniversary, which uh, kind of threw us for a loop. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, anniversary, birthday, what does that mean? Technically a genre, not really. Um, debatable, I mean, we could definitely do like a birthday anniversary. It's so hokey and it's kind of, it seems so formulaic that we kind of went for the wild card. And as far as that goes, is that you originally, you draw a genre. If you don't like that genre, you have an opportunity to go for the wild card, and you're stuck with that. And then so basically, not an easy choice, but we went for it, we went wild card, and we drew silent film. Silent film, I was like, dude, I've never, ever watched a silent film in my life. So pulling a silent film was kind of... You got silent film? We did? Yeah. You know, it, it kind of broke my heart a little, because I like writing dialogue. Me and Kevin, we have like, you know, we write really good dialogue together. When I when I heard that we pulled silent film, it was kind of it's kind of <laughs> up uh, because of all of all the, of all the genres that we could have pulled, we pulled the one where it was like great. So I pulled on a guy specifically to do onset audio. We have no onset audio, and I didn't get a, a composer, and we needed a composer because I'm not strong enough to compose an entire thing because a silent film heavily relies on the, the music composition. Uh, at first I was like, silent film, man, that's gotta be like the most difficult thing for anyone to do in 48 hours. And then the more I thought about it, uh, the more I loved the idea of doing silent film because silent films are almost always comedies. And that's like really what I wanted to do. And, uh, and then the more I thought about it, like the more I loved the idea of Charlie Chaplin trying to pick up chicks. Uh, the character is Vanessa or Victor, black musician. I don't know if that's like a full name or uh, or they could. Is that an occupation? Yeah. Black musician. What? Huh? <laughs> what is black musician? It might be their last name. Is it Victor or Vanessa Black? Oh. Oh. <laughs> the way he says it was funny because he's the character Vanessa Victor Bla uh, Black. Victor Black. He's a musician. <laughs> 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 As far as writers go, I mean, you know, they're pretty, pretty protective, as most writers are. Um, the producer, the producer of this film, brought in a surprise writer who the other writers I don't think knew about. They didn't even introduce this girl to me. She just came up to me with my script and was like, "Oh, I think we could do this." I'm like, "Yeah, and, and you are." I I think we all think that he was just trying to bang her. I'm right. I, that's what I feel like it was. We casted one guy's lead, and then about halfway through the morning, you know, as we're getting all set up and everything, Eugene comes to me. He's like, "Yeah, this isn't gonna work." And I was framing the shot with uh, one of uh, our actors, and I guess she's like five. I think she's about five four, five five. And then uh, Logan comes in at six three. So like the can, it was like an over the shoulder shot behind the girl, and with Logan coming in, and all I could see was like his Adam's apple and like everything in the bottom and I was just like wow like I pulled Dean to the side I'm like this dude is way too f tall it was Saturday morning to afternoon ish I don't you tend to lose track of what time it is um, but I saw Dean and Eugene talking in the parking lot and it looked like they were talking about something that really mattered At the end of the day on set and we found out the day of was a little too tall and by a little too tall I mean way too tall. <laughs> Framing was kind of, uh, as soon as we framed that first shot, you know, Eugene came up to me and he was like, dude, I'm like, I looked at him, yeah, um, we kind of made the choice. Yeah, so I have to take the guy aside and tell him we're switching out roles. Like, okay, you're no longer gonna be the lead now, now you're gonna be some like secondary character that gets like two seconds of screen time, just so you know. When uh, I found out that Logan wasn't gonna be the main guy, I just, I felt bad for him because he was just crushed. 
and my girlfriend was a makeup artist at the time and she kept telling me oh he's a nice guy I think he want I think we're like I'm gonna do makeup for him on one of his shoots and I just when I found out of the news I just saw him sitting there listening to his iPod trying not to look sad and <laughs> Man, I just remember like looking at I well I, I just remember I couldn't look at Logan and just how broken hearted that man was. It's not an easy choice to make by any means. And uh, just you, you, you could tell physically that when he was sitting there getting pr prepared for the role and then when he found out uh, like when he was sitting in the corner with his headphones on. It was a tough call. Uh, it actually worked out a little bit better. Spencer filled the costume out a little bit more. Logan was a little too skinny for it, so it was easier to get the uh, front of the jacket to look like it was too small for him because uh, it was very, you know, very tight on Spencer already. So just a matter of uh, sewing up the back a little bit and uh, bringing out the flare at the bottom of the jacket actually worked out better. So I think the costume actually looked better on Spencer than it did on Logan. I think he did the part great. Um, he had much better uh, facial expressions. Um, than Logan did. I'm not saying Logan's a bad actor. Just <laughs> so. So the main gist of the movie was that um, you have this guy who is seemingly like stuck in the 1920s um, as this Charlie Chaplin type character, but he's in the modern world and he's like trying to find some girls to hang out with and stuff. Um, but he goes to a modern day fancy restaurant. I mean, what I got from it was sort of the absurdity between old school and new school and um, basically you know a guy trying to use his charm and um, charisma that would have you know been uh, something out of the 1920s that would have actually worked and then he brings it into the modern world where we're a totally different you know people basically and then it, just the comedy that ensues from that. Sound team uh very passionate bunch, Colton Ribas. Very serious cat. The sound team that I put together consisted of Grover uh, and Norell, both who I knew from school. Uh, Grover was supposed to be on set audio, which we didn't need. Norell I brought on late for piano composition. Norell. Colton. Uh, he's very picky. He's a picky guy. He. Uh, he knows what he he knows what he wants to do. He does things a specific way in his own way, um, but like he just kept saying that we're not gonna finish. He's like, I'm just gonna quit right now, and we're done. We're not even gonna finish this. Here, there's a little bit of a uh, little friction going on back in the audio room between Colton and Narelle. We kind of clashed a little bit. Um, she's got an attitude problem. Yeah, pressure builds up right at the end when you know you only have an hour left and you still have half the film left to score. And it's like, holy shit, are we gonna get it done? You're like, you know, the pressure is really on for the music because, well, if you can only get half done with it, then it's like, what the hell? Like, you have half half your film scored. So then it's more likely that you would just not even put any of it in the final product. So it's either all or nothing at that point. I think my favorite person to work with had to be uh, Nicoletta. So, uh, yes. It was like big, I don't know. What she, what when, we were, she? when we were casting, <laughs> she came in and she like, uh, it's kind of rough on the English. Yeah. The goods has inspired you. Don't you understand? She spoke like seven other languages. I don't know, like fluently. Yeah. Like, her, her English was the worst, yeah. but her Japanese was excellent. Mm -hmm. So we're like, yeah, we can't use her. And she was huge. She was like a six foot. <laughs> like she, was, she was a big girl and she wore huge heels and very uh, tight clothes and a lot of makeup. Once we got silent film, the, the language barrier was pretty much out the window. So, And uh, we actually wrote a character with her in mind. And uh, I thought she did a great job. She's hot. She's kind of hot in like some angles. Did somebody ask you that? <laughs> <laughs> Four o'clock. I don't know how long they've been keeping me here. All the days are just blurred now. It's all one big long day to me. Right. They're beating me. They're not feeding me. I'm starving. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. God. I'm redundant as well. Sons of bitches. 
I just send the money so I can get home. I'm sick of being here. It's going great though. We just shot one of the bar scenes and uh, we're about to shoot, I believe, the rollerblade scene. So I might be dead after this. But hopefully not. Hopefully we can keep shooting. And uh, I'm not dead. And uh, you are beautiful, Zach. Can I, can I just tell you that? I want you now. Rolling. Ooh, action. Rap. Okay, so now I'm gonna give up. You wanna do this too, Dean? You wanna do a? You wanna do a wrap update? Yeah. I'll get help. I'll do one. I'll do one right now. No, I'm a writer, the DP, and an editor. You're not gonna give my a FaceTime? No, I won't, no, I won't go to the screen like this. Alright, right, so I guess we just, well, not I guess, but we just wrapped up the final shot of, uh, uh, oh, is that my I don't even know what the f*** this movie's called yet. <laughs> I vote. What's the title, Chap That Ass? Chap That Ass. But I guess, like, uh, it was a very heavy favorite earlier during the day and then, like, kind of died down after everyone started getting tired. Coming to their senses, I guess. With the name, anyways. <laughs> and literally don't done. talk. With all the, with all the uh, shooting. <laughs> now we're gonna go into the editing. What time is it? One time thirty. My freaking phone's dead. Okay. One thirty. Uh, Sunday morning. What time? Is Edwin, like? as far as we know, has like a rough, rough final edit. And then fuck, he just raps. Beautiful takes. I'm feeling great. So. So behind the scenes, rap. We entered the first year as uh, its first time in Las Vegas, which was seven years ago. And uh, from then, we kind of got put together. Uh, we were all in college at the time, Art Institute of Las Vegas, and uh, kind of got put together randomly with a group of uh, different students that kind of drew numbers and separated us into teams. I met Eugene, and I was so desperately wanted to get into it, so I told him I knew sound, which I didn't know about sound, because that's how bad I wanted to get into it. And uh, coincidentally enough, we made a few last minute changes, but from that original core group to seven years later today, uh, pretty much that was the origin of the ruse, and we've been working together since. After seven years of doing this, it's just, it just keeps getting better. And I've never been so much prouder of my team and of the ruse films and of the people I work with. Like, everyone that does this with me is my friend. We just finished our seventh year. Uh, grew a lot um, from the original team. We probably about have four or five, uh, maybe three or four original people from you know, the early days, core team. Um, and then since then, we've made a lot of good acquisitions, adding on to the team. And uh, since then, and one reoccurring factor that is, makes itself more apparent each and every year is that really is a team affair. It's all about working together, finding a great group of people that can kind of just collaborate and just get shit done in 48 hours. And it's just this bond that we have that you can't get from any anywhere else. They're like brothers and... As far as the evolution of us, the Roos film goes, I think we've come a long, long way. For me, it's just, it's humbling to be working with so many talented people and to have them trust me with like uh, such a responsibility and to see the final product and be like blown away by, uh, by how everybody does their job and you can trust everybody to do their job. Hey, tell me, what? Are we in? Shut the f up. Wait, so we're in. We're in? <laughs> Yo, dude, look, you need to call people when it hits 7.30. What the f that's like what's always. Hell yeah.